I am sick of NVIDIA. They're charging too much, right? That's what everyone's talking about. The 5090, the 5080, it's gonna be way too expensive, right? I swear if I have to sell my kidney one more time, I am not buying this. What do you think? Shut up. Yeah, we're getting the 5090 and the 5080 here in January with the 5070 and 5070 Ti later in February. And guys, I gotta say, I think everyone was surprised with Nvidia's aggressive pricing for the 50 series. We may have been you know, kind of manipulated by, I don't know, some sort of leaker or somebody trying to get us to, you know, price anchor this thing a little bit higher. But guys, the way that they're segmenting this, I gotta say, it's a pretty giga chat. It's a pretty good move. It doesn't feel like, you know, we're getting ripped off with the way they're segmenting 50 series. So let's talk about it. Starting right off, 5090, it's the giga chat, it's the beast, 512 bit, 32 gigabytes of GDDR7. This thing's only gonna cost $2,000. I mean, guys, 4090s are costing more than that now. This thing is a beast. Like, I think it has like three times the AI teraflops of the 4090. Do with that what you will, but it has a DLSS4. Guys, my dream came true. It's a reality. Um, you know, I guess the old saying, it was revealed to me in the dream is the best source after all, but looks like neural compression is a thing. And in the demo they showed, uh, they were actually getting a 65%, 66%, basically two third um, reduction in VRAM usage. Guys, that's crazy. Two third reduction in VRAM usage from their test now. That's probably the best lighting. But so basically if you had an eight gigabyte graphics card and you max the VRAM out on that with this neural compression technology, that would only come out to three point five two gigabytes or three and a half gigabytes. So kind of crazy stuff. Are they gonna pull this thing with DLSS4 neural compression technology and keep the 60 class at eight gigabytes forever? Guys, we gotta wait and see. But I gotta say like that neural compression was kind of cool, even though it's kind of weird. I didn't see it on DLSS4 on their website. They didn't mention anything about neural compression. It was just something before the keynote. Like it's almost like neural compression and DLSS4 are not the same thing. And that may be the case, now you may be asking, is this neural compression coming to uh, you know 4,000 series, 3,000? And guys, I gotta say, I don't think it is because what Jensen said during the keynote is it runs on the next gen CUDA cores. There's something within the new pipeline within these CUDA cores. It's a hardware, um, some sort of hardware that they've added that allows it to perform this neural compression during the render process, right? So actually you'll be able to use your tensor cores and upscale while doing neural compression at the same time. Really, really crazy. Not only that, you know, we're still kind of like on the 40, 50, 90, it's the bread and butter, but I'm also talking about DLSS here. DLSS 4 is kind of crazy. Okay, so you generate one frame, you know, you render one frame and it generates three more frames. It's predicting, you know, it's not using frames that are already generated, it's actually going to predict frames. So it inserts a frame based on um, something you've already rendered, but then after that it starts predicting. It's kind of crazy. We're gonna have to see how this looks. I doubt it can look as good as DLSS3, you know, based on actual render frames, but we'll have to see. Also, NVIDIA is saying that they render one in every 16 pixels now. So AI is rendering 15 pixels or it's just kind of crazy. I don't know the math on that. I'll do that in post, but it's crazy. Like the, the amount of that AI hallucination going on. That's actually, you know, if it's accurate, guys, if it looks good at the end of the day, that's what matters and it will be good. But I just got to say, like, I'm scared for the development of games in the future. Like I'm scared of like, what this, this is gonna lead to lazy development. Let's just be real. Like this is an awesome thing. This is awesome hardware and software, but it's not gonna be good when you can just flip a switch and get this much more performance. I mean, people aren't gonna try to optimize their games anymore. Also, it's not coming to lower end hardware. The multiple gen, uh, frame gen is only a DLSS 4 exclusive to 
um, the 5000 series, right? So you can only generate, you know, three extra frames or it, so you render one and then you generate three with 5000 series. With 4000 series, it's just regular old frame gen. It's actually upgraded a bit to look better and run a little bit better. And then also all the graphics cards get like updated, like ray reconstruction, I believe. So that's kind of cool. It's kind of cool feature. If you thought the 4090 was like a crazy workhorse for like media encoding, video editing and AI, just get this guys. It has three media encoders, the NVENC, that's ninth gen. So it has three of those encoders. And then it also has two extra decoders. That's compared to the 4090s, only two encoders and one decoder. So we have a total of five media engines on the 5090 compared to only three on the 4090. So whatever kind of exports you're doing, if you're doing video editing, this thing's gonna rip and tear through that. I don't know if it has the new, um, what is it called, H.266 standard. I think it just has AV1 and H.265, but still, that's really, really crazy to see there. Also, the 40 or the 5080 got a bump up from two uh, decode and one encode to uh, two on each. So that's kind of nice to see from the 5080. Speaking of the 5080, let's just go ahead and talk about it. You know, I mean, sure, it's half of the cores, it's half of the VRAM, even half of the memory bandwidth, but guys, it's half the price. So, you know, it's not predatory at this point. Like you sure you get half of, it's not even half the performance. Honestly, it's kind of a good deal if you think about it, but you know, that's kind of reasoning here. It is a thousand dollar GPU. The 5080 is coming out at a thousand dollars, which is, you know, 200 less than the 4080, which was egregious at the time. So it's on the level of the 4080 super in price. But in performance, we're gonna have to wait and see for that. Um, we aren't getting a lot of performance from NVIDIA. We're just getting a lot of AI kind of estimates, which are very hard to gauge. And I don't know how that's gonna all work out. But the 5080, it's at $1,000, 16 gigs of VRAM. You know, all the specs that we've been talking about are true with this GPU. But, you know, it has another um, media encoder. So it has two decoders, two encoders. And yeah, I mean, it's half, of the hardware and it's half the price. So guys, I gotta say the 5080 is not as big as a letdown as we all thought. It's it's an okay 80 class, 256 bit bus, but I think it's okay GPU at the end of the day. My preference for like, if you were trying to get into 50 series and you just wanna play some games, just go with the 5070 Ti. This thing's only $750 and it still has 16 gigs of VRAM. So you're saving 25% off. I'm not sure if it's going to be 25% less performance. I have a feeling that, you know, it's not, it's probably going to be closer to just like 20% less performance. And that's pretty good. I mean, you still got the VRAM, you still have the same memory bandwidth. I think it has the same amount of encoders. I could be wrong and looking pretty good there. I think that is the star of the show. The 5070 Ti is what you guys want to be looking at. But I know a lot of you guys are going to be asking, what about the 5070? $549, 4090 performance. What's not to like? Like what is not to like about that? Well, I'll tell you first off, this thing is not gonna be on the level of a 4090, just base resolution raster. This is with the new DLSS 4 tech. Um, obviously we're generating more frames and that's kind of what this is, right? With DLSS 4 on a RTX 5000 card, you generate three extra frames from the one you rendered. So four frames total and on DLSS, uh, three from a RTX 4000. I believe you only generate one extra from the one you rendered. So that's two total frames from four. So do with that math what you will. Um, it's kind of, we're gonna be really hard to estimate what the 5070 actually, you know, what its performance will be. I think it's gonna be around a 4070 Ti or 3090 Ti, probably somewhere around there, but it has 12 gigs of VRAM. You know, 549, this is crazy competitive for what it is, if you think about it. This AMD cannot come out with the 9070 XT next to the 40 or 5070 at uh, 550. Even if it has more VRAM, it's not going to matter with neural compression, DLSS4, all these things that are really stacking against not only AMD, but Intel at this point. Guys, like anything, <laughs> anything over $500 is NVIDIA territory now. Like that's just how it is. And you know, 9070 XT has got to be 500 or under, it's DOA, like for real. 500 is even pushing it. Like no one really is going to pick that up unless it's faster than we than we estimate, right? 
Um, because the 40, 50, 70 will probably be around 7,900 XT where the 9070 will be, but actually, you know, has features that work really well. So um, as for like, you know, a B770, Intel should just give up on that right now. They shouldn't come out the B770 for good reason, guys, because with um, with NVIDIA come out with the, you know, 5070 at 549, 4060 Ti, 16 gigabyte, it's probably going to be around 400. And I don't know, man, I don't think you could justify, you know, Intel 16 gigabyte card, NVIDIA 16 gigabyte card, same price. Obviously, you're going to get what the NVIDIA one has way better features like all that. So, you know, it's a good thing. They just came up with the B580. That's really successful where it's at. NVIDIA is not going to deep <laughs> sit down all the way to 250. 40, 60 or 50, 60 might be 300 now that these prices have come out. So, you know, Intel just needs to stay where they're at with ARC for right now. And AMD is gonna find themselves in a no man's land where Intel's pushing them up and Nvidia's pushing them down and they're just kind of squeezed right around 400, $450. And that's really the only place AMD would make a little bit of sense here. And, you know, a lot of people are even saying that RDNA 4 is DOA, which we'll have to see. Um, you know, FSR 4, or whatever it's called, the AI based upscaling could be pretty good. But at this point, um, they haven't even caught DLSS 3 and DLSS 4 is out and it's looking even toastier, even more spicy than what they had cooking up with FSR 4. So yeah, like I gotta say, whew, this went hard boys. This keynote, like it went a lot harder than I thought it was gonna be. Although like it was very unceremonious, like the, the launch of these cards or the announcement they just kind of threw them out there like that's the price okay gamers leave we're talking about ai now we got we're bringing out robots all this he showed off some cool products like there was this one little mini pc that could like run ai models it had like over 100 gigabytes of ram i think you could outfit it with really cool stuff there it's like a mini dgx system kind of cool um yeah this is definitely going to shake up the market i'm surprised that they you know even cut some prices with tariffs coming in i don't know how that's going to work like if I had to give my predictions on how this is gonna go, I think everything's gonna sell out day one, all graphics cards right when they launch, and there's gonna be scalpers galore. I mean, if you thought the B580 was bad, it's gonna be way worse than that, guys. Just get ready, lock in, and AIBs are gonna have it their way. They're gonna, <laughs> AIB models will, for the 5090, will be upwards of, you know, 2,500 day one, $3,000 a couple weeks after, and then probably $3,500. I know as crazy as it sounds, um, probably a couple months after once it's been selling out and people will pay astrono astronomical prices for this 32 gigabytes monster. I mean, honestly guys, like $2,000 for the for the 5090 is a steal if, if you're doing anything that generates income, if you're doing AI work. I mean, that's the only graphics card that can do it for that price. Other graphics cards that were $32 cost thousands, like four or $5,000 and they weren't even on the performance of the 5090. So. They're the most valued company in the world. And despite that, they're still pushing on for innovation. They're still trying to give us the best products, you know, and honestly, the prices are pretty competitive, guys. They're pretty competitive. Um, you know, it makes a lot of sense why AMD chicken out of the high end of this generation. It was not gonna make sense with this stuff coming out. I mean, bro, can we just talk about like what happened today with AMD's keynote? Like they didn't even come out they, they said, yeah, we have a 9070 XT, but we aren't gonna tell you anything about it. Performance, nah. Price, no. We aren't gonna talk about this thing at all. We're waiting for Nvidia so we can see what they're pricing their 4070 at, take 10% off, and just go with that, okay? Who cares if it sells or not? We don't, we don't need money. <laughs> Are you joking? We don't need to sell anything. We just do this for like, I don't know, tax write-off of something. Like we're getting money from somewhere. Just don't worry about it. But yeah, definitely NVIDIA took the cake today with the CES rollouts. I mean, um, we started off with Intel in the morning and there really wasn't a lot to talk about, like nothing really exciting, just mobile chips, which I don't really care about, you know, Arrow Lake on mobile, whatever. Um, then, you know, I don't, I think that's like all they announced. They also said that they are dedicated to using Arc in the future. Like they're Arc on desktop, they're dedicated to that. So rip to Moore's Law is dead for that. Um, he was totally wrong on that one. He probably will never admit that. But yeah, Intel said they're dedicated to Arc on desktop. So that's cool. Nothing really came out of their keynote. And then AMD, they had a lot of cool stuff in their keynote. I gotta say, like, 
a lot of people are being negative, like 9070 XT, where is it at? And I agree, like they're definitely scared. They obviously they were scared of what Nvidia showed today, but I mean, Strix Halo is looking fresh. It's looking heavy and it's looking clean. I mean, Strix Halo is looking real good. You know, we're getting an APU, a big chunky APU on um, mobile platforms. And I think you can even get this in many PCs, you know, 40 compute units. Guys, let's go. You can outfit this thing with 128 gigabytes of RAM. Really, really cool there. But obviously um, their naming scheme, like, no, bro. They're purposefully being predator. <laughs> AMD is purposely being predatory with their naming scheme to confuse you so you don't know what you're buying so they can sell you old hardware. That's literally the whole point of this thing. Offload old hardware onto their consumer base for higher prices. You don't know what you're buying and you have to upgrade sooner. That's literally why they do this thing. Like they don't want you to know what you're buying. They just want you to know that it's their brand. That's, that's it. That's why they're trying to confuse you. Not only that, with their new GPU, they're naming it and sort of like, just like Nvidia's GPUs, but obviously they had to inflate their number from 7,000, they skipped 8,000 to 9,000. So bigger number, better. They do this with their CPUs. They Now they're doing it with GPUs. And obviously um, their marketing team is really just slimy. I don't like it. Obviously they're just trying to deceive their customer base and. I don't like it at all. You know, I the people that design the chips aren't necessarily the ones naming it these things, but whoever's their work, whoever is working at Andy's marketing team needs to be fired because it's been bad. Like they're they're always had some really weird marketing tactics even since like Ryzen, but it's only gotten worse since then. And I I'm not a fan. I'm not a fan. Even if they make great products, I'm not a fan. And they were obviously very very scared of you know what nvidia was cooking up with their gpus today and not only that nvidia launched or they <laughs> talked about this new arm slash um it was like an arm cpu 20 cores with a gpu and it was chiplet based but like the way you actually are supposed to make chiplets with like a fully completed die fully completed die silicon interposer bada bing bada boom really cool stuff there um yeah the 5090 take all my money take it take my money now okay um, 5090 was cool. $2,000, like, you know, if I had a lot of extra money, didn't have a wifi I had to pay for, and, um, you know, wasn't saving up for stuff, had nothing, had no future. If I had no future and just money to burn, 5090 is going to my rig tomorrow. But obviously, I can't just spend two grand on a graphics card. Now, can I? Now, if I get a lot of donations from you guys, a lot of AdSense revenue, we're getting that thing. It's popping in my rig. 32 gigs of VRAM. Yeah, and I'm gonna get all the subs because of it. So, you know, if you want me to get a 5090, first off, email NVIDIA, tell them Silicon Stick's the best YouTuber. Why doesn't he not have a 5090? Number two, donate, whatever, comment, do whatever you can so we can get this channel on the up and up. But yeah, 5090, take my money. 5080, okay, not bad. 5070 Ti, star of the show for gamers. 5070, your mid-range king. And then, you know, we don't know about 5060 Ti and 5060 yet, but um, hopefully if they follow this pricing strategy, it won't be too bad. And, you know, neural compression, they're going to try some uh, slanderous things with the 5068 gigabyte. But we'll have to wait and see if they come out with the 12 gigabyte, 12 gigabyte model. I think they will. And yeah, overall, NVIDIA won the CES keynote war this year with AMD in second and Intel just lost by default kind of in my opinion like they didn't have anything negative it's just nothing really i got excited about personally um you know a lot of people are saying they're super disappointed with amds which you know i was a little bit but seeing strix halo in the flesh really brightened my day up a little bit so what do you guys think you know who won the ces war this year you know is the 5090 the high-end savior we all needed 5080, you know, it's not money grabbing, but it's pretty devious. What do you guys think? So can stay shining out. No question too big, no detail too small. He's got the knowledge, he's got the skill. When he drops his taste, the haters stand still. Fanboys can cry, but they can't deny. Silicon stakes truth cuts through the lie.